I already have a couple of attorneys on the phone as well. That's fine. And because I spoke out at a public meeting, you're trying to arrest me for failing to provide your identification. Can I see what? No. no. What I'm be, what I'm being Just charged for? No, you're not being charged with anything yet. Well, you have We're investigating. to. If I don't provide my ID, I, I understand have what to. you just said to me. That you said that you had to be given a charge to provide your identification. I'm telling you that's wrong. Okay. I All you need is. I, it's not about dis disagreeing. Okay. That's the facts. I know my rights. You second. obviously don't. But um, if if you speak out during a public meeting, you get a warning. And if you speak out again, we can ask you to be re to remove yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did tonight. Mm -hmm. We're very polite. There's no physical, nothing. She, you know, Herb didn't grab onto her or nothing like that. He did. Um, he did put his arm on me. He most certainly did. Mm -hmm. I put my hand on He did. Put his yeah. hand on me. Welcome to this deep dive into a disturbing incident that recently took place in Oswego County, New York. The key issues here revolve around First and Fourth Amendment rights and how they were seemingly ignored, not just by a public official, but by the very people tasked with upholding the law. Let's break down what happened and analyze the violations step by step. The incident occurred during a public meeting where a woman was lawfully present, expressing her opinion. This is crucial because public meetings are designed for citizens to engage in dialogue and express themselves, a fundamental principle under the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. The First Amendment guarantees the right to free speech and to petition the government for grievances. It explicitly allows citizens to engage with public officials, especially in open forums like public meetings. In this case, the woman wasn't disrupting the meeting with chaos or disorderly conduct. She was simply speaking her mind, something she had every right to do. However, someone A didn't like what she was saying. They asked her to leave, which she rightfully refused because she had broken no law and had every right to be there. After her refusal, someone A escalated the situation by calling the police, a clear attempt to weaponize law enforcement to silence speech they found disagreeable. Hello. Hello. Thanks, uh, Supervisor Barney. How you sir? Hi. Hi. How are you? Um, we sure. had a situation where we had a person disrupted our meeting. I issued a warning. Okay. And upon the second uh, incident, no, asked her to leave. She refused to leave. Um, no physical altercation or anything like that occurred. Our um, security officer here walked over and asked her to please leave. She refused several times. Okay. So we want her out. Now you know, she's got some friends here that are refusing to leave too. Okay. Uh, we're done with our meeting. Okay. And. Uh, Time for people to go. Okay, okay. Where's the where is Where's this is her here? I'm not sure what name she's going by tonight. She likes Jane Public. Uh, Michelle Allen. Okay. You leaving, ma'am? Uh, yeah, I was told I had to wait because I was being the police were being Nobody called on me. Okay. Go, all right. So you have friends with you too? Okay. Who's, who's your yeah. friend? You guys? Okay. All right. Well, let's just have you guys. Well, he told me I had to leave a public meeting, and then he said he called the cops. So I was waiting for the police to come, so I would not be physically removed. Shush. I got you. Because okay. so. I'm allowed to speak at a public meeting. Okay. Are you with her now? Yes, okay. thank you. Public resources. So, um, we will you be want her if we, not if, get the, yeah, um, if, if I want to have her arrested, can I do that? No, you cannot. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, actually, uh, it's uh, obstructing governmental administration. This has been going on for an extended period of time, like two and a half years. Um, so, okay. that's, so okay. that's where so we're that's at. Where all right. I've talked to Don Hilton about this. Do already. you uh, have your ID on you? I do, and I don't have to provide it. It's a Fourth Amendment, right? No, well, you are being investigated, so yes, you do For have to identify yourself. For what crime am I being committed? Okay. Just so so if, we're, right if we're talking you about take a governmental look, yeah. obstruction, OGA. because I spoke yeah. out at a public meeting, I'm not here to argue about the reasons why you're being charged with that, so we're going to investigate it. Okay. And so for that, well, we're going to need your identification. Am I being you don't of? have to commit a crime to be investigated. Right. In order to provide my ID, for you, uh, have, you to have to be investigated. Yes, you have to. You have, have to be investigated. Nope, you anymore. have to be investigated. Doesn't have to be a crime. I'm not providing my ID. You have to. Why don't? When the police arrived, instead of assessing whether a crime had occurred, which it hadn't, they immediately sided with someone A and began to demand the woman's identification. Under New York law, a citizen is not obligated to provide identification unless they are suspected of committing a crime or are being arrested or ticketed for an offense. The officer claimed that she was being investigated and therefore had to provide ID, but this assertion is legally incorrect. According to New York's Stop and Identify statute,
police may stop an individual and demand their identification if they have reasonable suspicion that the person is committing, has committed, or is about to commit a crime. Simply speaking at a public meeting, regardless of whether someone disagrees with the content of the speech, is not a crime. By demanding her ID without any reasonable suspicion of a crime, the officer was overstepping the boundaries set by the Fourth Amendment. The woman explicitly stated she had committed no crime and there was no probable cause for her to provide identification. She was correct in asserting her rights. The Supreme Court has consistently ruled that law enforcement officers cannot stop or demand identification from individuals without reasonable suspicion of criminal activity. In Heibel v. 6th Judicial District Court of Nevada, the court did uphold the constitutionality of stop and identify statutes, but only under circumstances where reasonable suspicion exists. Here, there was no reasonable suspicion, just the public expression of an opinion that someone A didn't like. You will provide your ID. Or what? Or are you going to be placed in custody? Uh, for what? For OGA. Which you'll is... have a second charge for that. Okay, I would suggest you not do this and you call a supervisor. Oh, I would love to call my supervisor. I would love Why don't you that. go ahead and get Pretoria on the phone? I already have a couple of attorneys on the phone as well. That's fine. And because I spoke out at a public meeting, you're trying to arrest me for... Failing to provide your can identification. Can I see what... No. no. What I'm, be, what I'm being charged for. No, you're not being charged with anything yet. Well, you have We're to... investigating. If I don't provide my ID... I, I understand have what to. you just said to me, that you said that you have to be given a charge to provide your identification. I'm telling you that's wrong. Okay. I disagree. All you need is... I, it's not about dis disagreeing. Okay. That's the facts. I know my rights. Hold on one you second. obviously don't. Gregor would like to speak with you. Okay. No, she, she, she wants a supervisor, okay. so. Actually, we have a lady here that would love to speak with you. Hold on one second. No, I'm requesting a supervisor be present. Preacher, are you able to come down here? Yeah. What, Thank you. What am I being charged with? You are not being charged with anything. You are being investigated. You're refusing to provide for, identification. Thank for you. what am I being investigated I'm sorry, did you, did, you, did you not just say? Can I, see, can, can I see what he's trying to charge yeah, me for? Um, so what's going on is a long, drawn out, Interruption that's gone on over about two and a half years. Okay. okay. For mm -hmm. every meeting, public documents, which is for every, an open meeting law. Every meeting, every month. Just, well, there was a couple that she didn't. She was actually good a couple times. Um, but um, if if you speak out during a public meeting, you get a warning. And if you speak out again, we can ask you to be re to remove yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did tonight. Mm -hmm. We're very polite. There's no physical, nothing. She, you know. Herb didn't grab onto her or nothing like that. He did. Um, he did put his arm on me. At this point, we also need to address the broader issue of due process, guaranteed under the Fifth and Fourteenth Amendments. Due process ensures that no one is deprived of life, liberty, or property without fair legal procedures. In this case, the public official and the police were effectively attempting to deprive the woman of her liberty, her right to be present at a public meeting, without any legitimate legal basis. The use of force or coercion to remove her when she had broken no law is a clear abuse of power. The officer even went so far as to imply that she could be arrested merely for failing to provide identification. This is not how the law works. Citizens are not obligated to comply with police demands without a clear and legally justifiable reason. Like that. He did. Um, he did put his arm on me. He most certainly did. Mm -hmm. I put my hand on He did put yeah. his hand on me. Um, I didn't agree. So, at any rate... Um, I've, I've talked to Dan about this a while back, mm -hmm. one night when she pushed her way into my office and I have recorded. yelled out. Good. I recorded it. It's all recorded. Yeah, yelled out that um, she was a member of the press when Randy Pellis. Uh, I am a member of the press. Conversation with me. Um, <laughs> Most talked certainly. to Dan the next day, um, explained the whole thing, and he just said, you know, document. I am a member of the press. So, at any rate, um, it's not irrelevant. That's not to me. government and freedom it's of information. It's not to me because law. right now, now, now you're committing a, a violation with me. Be can I see what he's trying to? No, charge I'm asking me? you this for is, your identification. I don't have to decorum. provide it unless I'm being investigated. Say it with me. Investigated. No, it's not just investigation. Yes, it is. It's no, investigation. It's yes, it is. Okay, hundred we'll percent. It is. We'll debate that in court then. That's fine, but you're still okay. going to have to provide your documentation because you're going to be arrested for it. Okay. So that's, or what am I being... I'm not going to keep it saying that this thing over and over again. Can I please see the, the statute that he's trying to quote to me? Can I please see the statute he's quoting to me? The document that he's handing me. 
Are you know holding to me? Can I please see that? That's going to be separate for what I'm from what I'm charging Can you with. Can I please see what he is? What you, did you see him going in there trying to get it? Okay, that's all I'm asking. Okay, but I'm telling you now you're going to have two different charges for it. You can charge him with whatever you think you should. Okay. Okay. Another egregious moment occurred when the officer suggested that the woman could be arrested for obstructing governmental administration. Let's break this down under New York Penal Law Section 195.05, which defines obstructing governmental administration as intentionally obstructing or impairing the administration of law or other governmental function. Again, by speaking out at a public meeting, this woman was exercising her constitutional right, not obstructing government. Obstructing governmental administration requires actual interference with official duties. Something far more substantial than simply refusing to provide identification or speaking during a public meeting. The officer's threat of arrest on these grounds was legally baseless, and further underscores how law enforcement was being improperly used to silence free speech rather than uphold the law. So these are local policies. These are local rules of decorum, which are not a statute. These are not a legal okay. statute. These I don't are, think he said that this was a statute. He's telling me. Can, he's telling me the statute. I'm telling that you, he, this is not a legal statute. I'm this is a local you, policy. He's not reading what he's telling me from those papers. These are just other documents okay. he had in his hand. What he's is explaining. the what is the legal statute for well, this? This is a local policy. This you're is town of New Haven rules of decorum. You're looking for the statute of obstructing governmental administration. Whatever he yes, okay. whatever he's accusing me of, I would like to see that statute. It's, it's pretty. The pretty, authority falls within the town board. We have the authority to make local laws. Yeah, I'm not. We made one earlier. This is not a local law. This is policy. I'm not questioning it. that. We're asking you to do. I'm not questioning it. Okay. To this be honest, this is a policy. You. So listen, you not said you law. know your rights. So I mean, this is a policy. That has nothing to do with what I'm going to be arresting I'm you for. I'm asking for the statute of what you're saying it's obstruction of justice, you, correct? You, know what? you got your phone? You got your phone? Can I ask, can you? I'm going to have you look it up because I don't have it on me. What statute am I okay. being arrested Obstructing for? Obstructing governmental okay. administration. Can I see that statute? Yes. Do you want to pull up your phone? I would rather not. I think that well, you are supposed, supposed to provide that. No, I don't have a law book in my okay. back pocket. Do you have a phone? I do, but I don't use it for work use, okay? Because okay? then it gets subpoenaed, and I don't want that. Okay. Okay? Ditto. Yours would not be subpoenaed. Okay. But it's it's free information okay. that everyone has on the Internet. Okay. Okay? So. Otherwise, Super. you know, you'll have to wait until we okay. process the arrest. Okay. Now, you might have noticed that someone A and the officer referenced local policies and rules of decorum. While local bodies have the authority to create and enforce such rules, these rules cannot override constitutional rights. The First Amendment is the supreme law of the land, and no local rule can infringe upon that. If this woman was simply speaking her mind at a public meeting, then no local rule of decorum can justify removing her, especially when no disorderly conduct or criminal activity occurred. Additionally, the officer's attempt to frame this as a violation of local law doesn't hold up under legal scrutiny. Local laws are subject to the U.S. Constitution, and in this case, the woman's constitutional rights were clearly being violated. Such a waste of money. Well, it's kind of a waste time. of time. All you have to do is, it give, is. give us a your ID. I don't have to give you that because I am not reasonably, I have not reasonably committed a crime. There is no reasonable suspicion that no. I have committed a crime. We ask for people's identification, just simply if they need to be checked on, simply if we are just and encountering I them. I don't wish to waive my Fourth Amendment right for that. Okay. In this situation, both someone A and the police were in the wrong. The First Amendment guarantees the right to free speech, especially in public forums like government meetings. The Fourth Amendment protects against unreasonable searches and seizures meaning the woman had no obligation to provide her identification when she had not committed a crime. New York law also supports her refusal to provide ID in the absence of reasonable suspicion of criminal activity. In short, no one should be silenced by the threat of police intervention simply for speaking their mind at a public meeting, and no one should be unlawfully pressured to provide identification when they've committed no crime. Thank you for watching.
And remember, standing up for your rights is not just an option, it's your duty as a citizen. Okay, listen, I'll, I'll be right there. I'm just letting you know, I don't know who this, these people are that you're wrapped up with, but this is, this is not going to go well for them. I know they understand, they think they, they know things. Unfortunately, that's not how the law works, okay? So I don't know what kind of warped sense of reality that they're living in, but this obviously is not going to pan out. The sense of reality is that he's a several time felon, and we were very scared leaving okay. her alone in there with him. Okay. So. I, you know, I understand safety things, but okay. honestly. But that's, that's the only reason okay. Connie and I went in there with her. All right, and well, stayed. she did some things to me that qualified she did. arrest, which is she didn't identify herself, and she has to. Right. By law. I don't know what she thinks is going on with the laws, but she doesn't obviously understand them. And I don't know what she thinks makes you think about knowing the laws, but like I said, it's obviously a pretty big misunderstanding on her part. So I would just honestly be wary of hanging around with her or sticking to her agendas, okay? If you don't want to associate with them, fine. I don't know. <laughs> you come up here because it's a time where you yeah. not be anywhere near him. He's a real scary fella. So. Okay. All right. I understand. And that's why we were worried about her. So, and we just okay. want to wait. So. Okay. But thank you. All right. Cool. Well, have thank a better you. night, okay? You too. Take care.